This video contains an orientation or a guide to confluence. The aim of this video is to give you a brief overview of the key areas of confluence so you can start using it quickly and confidently. At the end of the video, you'll know how content's organized in confluence, how to locate content, and how to find and connect with other people who are using confluence. A sensible place with this orientation to start with is the default landing area for the wiki and that's the dashboard. This is where you'll get to when you first log in. And the dashboard is a key area of confluence. It's a landing point and it's also a jumping off point. So you land here when you log in but you also jump to spaces and content in the wiki from the dashboard. And you can see over here you've got links to other key areas of confluence, some of which we're going to go over a little later. And you can also see here all of the spaces that you've got access to. The dashboard is also where you find the most recently updated content. So here you can see a stream of content. So these are the comments, the blogs, the updated pages, all items that you've got access to in the wiki. It's very important to note that you'll not see any content here that you don't have access to. I just mentioned spaces there, so I'll look at spaces next. They're a key part of Confluence. So content is separated into spaces in Confluence. And a space is like a folder on your PC or hard drive that holds related content. And there's two types of spaces in Confluence. You've got global spaces and you've got personal spaces. So users in Confluence all have the option to have a personal space. And the global space is usually set up along team, departmental, or say project lines. Now spaces contain pages and blog posts, and pages and blog posts have associated attachments and comments. So what's the difference between a page and a blog post? Well, not a great deal. One of the main differences is in the way that they're added to the space, because pages sit in a hierarchical structure, and blogs are added to the space by the date that they were submitted. One of the main differences in purpose, pages are for information and blog posts for news items. So spaces and their associated pages, blog posts, attachments and comments, they're a key part of Confluence and you can access spaces or all the spaces that you have access to are visible here on the landing point of the wiki. So you can add a page or a blog post directly from the dashboard. And once selected, you're given the option to add the page or blog post to a specific global or personal space. You can also navigate to the space in question and add the content directly to that space. Note that any page that you add will be added as a child of the initially selected page. So I'll just show you an example of what I mean here. So here I'm navigating to the HR space and I'm finding a page to add a child page to. You'll notice now that the newly added page is a child of the initial page. You can check where you've added your page to within the hierarchical structure by referring back up the breadcrumbs. So don't worry if you add a page in the wrong place, you can always remove a page or move it very easily. And both options are available from the tools menu here and here. So here's a little more about the hierarchical structure of pages within spaces. So pages are added in a hierarchical parent, child and sibling structure. And you can see this in place in the HR space. Health benefits and maternity benefits are siblings, the sibling pages, and their parent page is the employee benefits page. So the page applying for private health care is also a child of the health benefits page. And as I mentioned before, you can see the page in the hierarchy by following the breadcrumbs back. Now, when you create a space, or when your systems admin creates a space for you, there's a certain setup that's already there, and that's each space has a home page. So when I go to the HR space, I will go automatically to the home page of that space by default. And 
the usual structure is to keep the home page as the parent page for everything within the space. So just to review the concept of the hierarchical structure of pages, you can see here how if I add a page while viewing the home page, my newly added page becomes a child of the home page. You can see the parent child structure of content in your space by selecting the pages link from the browse menu here. If you prefer to see things in diagram form, here roughly translated into a flowchart is the structure of pages in this example space. So when you're first adding content to your wiki and content to your, the space that you're either a, um, a member of or you're administrating, it's beneficial to spend some time considering the way that your space is going to be structured. Consider the top level categories that will exist in your space and make them parent pages. Then make sure that the instructions about this space structure is conveyed to the members of your team or your department. A help page with instructions on how and where to add content would be a great way of doing this and could be something that new members of the team are asked to review in the first few days of working with you. This way you'll be able to keep and maintain a structure in your space that's easy to manage and so helps you relocate information at a later date. So if we look at blog posts next, blog posts are added in a similar way from the dashboard here or by navigating to the space in question and then selecting add and then blog posts. The post is included on the date in question, but you can choose a date other than the current one from here. But note that once you've posted this blog post, you can't edit the date of posting at a later stage. So you can't edit the date of posting at a later stage. If you want to see a list of all the blog posts within your space, go to the browse menu and then find blog posts and then you'll see a list of the blogs posted. So we've looked at how you can create a page or a blog post and where both of those items sit within the space structure. So when I talk about adding content to blog posts or pages, I'm actually talking about adding content to the body of the page or blog post. But you can also add comments to a page or blog post and you can also add attachments to a page or blog post and it's adding comments and attachments that I want to look at next. And these items complete the things that you can add to pages or blog posts using the add menu. So here's how you add an attachment. Go to the Add menu, select Attachment, and now locate the attachment from your hard drive. Alternatively, you can drag and drop the attachment where indicated. So here you can see the attachments that have been added to your page or blog post. And you can return to the normal view of your page by selecting the View icon. And to check your attachments again, go to the Tools menu and select Attachments. And again, to return to the page view, select the page view icon. If you need to delete the attachment, go to the tools menu, select attachments, and then select remove. So just to review that process, you add an attachment, you can return to page view, you can go see your page attachments, and you can remove attachments and then return to page view. Mm -hmm. If you need to remove your page, the full page itself, go to tools and then select remove. So here's how you add a comment to the page. So someone may come view the information on this page and they may have a question to ask. And they may not want to actually edit the content in the page itself. So a good way of doing this is adding a comment and then if that information that's been added in the comment is very useful, at a later stage, you could then take that content, add it to the actual page content, um, and this is all searchable, and it may be the case that one of those comments answers a question that somebody else has. So to add a comment, simply select Add, and then select Comment, and then add your comment. Then select Submit. You can delete comments, and you can also reply in line, 
if you're applying to a comment above, or you can create a completely new thread. You can also edit your comment by selecting the edit button. So adding actual content to your page is a very simple matter. You simply select the edit button here, add your content, and then select save. The quick search option is always available to you and it's, it's up here. That's available wherever you are in the wiki. For example, I've forgotten the name of a page that I made a couple of weeks ago and I know one of the words in the title was legislation. So I can type the word in and I'll get some suggestions of content that contain that word legislation. Now if that's not helping me, I can select the search icon and here I can see all of the possible returns or I can refine my search and search only via space or by who added the content here. Another key feature of Confluence is the people directory and you can get to the people directory via the dashboard or from up here via the browse menu. I mentioned before that Confluence connects you to your content and the people in the organisation and you can see all the people who've got user accounts on the system in this directory and if you want to find out more details about them you can access their profiles by selecting this link here. And the user profile, that's another key part of Confluence that lets you keep in touch and link up with people with similar areas of interest in your organisation. And your own profile, um, that's available from this menu here. You can edit the contents of your profile by selecting this edit link right here. So I've shown you some key areas of Confluence and also how to find things within the system. And Confluence also provides menus to find stuff. So there's the breadcrumbs, one simple way to find your way back up to the landing point of the wiki, that being the dashboard, is via the breadcrumbs. And you'll see here that I can move back from a page, back up the hierarchy of the space, and then return to the landing point of the wiki, which is the dashboard. Menus and the content of menus changes according to where you are within Confluence. For example, on the dashboard I've got fewer menu options, fewer than I would if I was looking at a page. I can always access my username menu up here and from here I can access items like my personal space or my profile. I'll just move to a page now so I can look at the available menus that are on a page. And now when I'm looking at a page in a space I've got more options. The tools menu lets you do things like manage your pages and deal with page or blog facilities such as the page history. The Add menu lets you add content to your space, such as creating pages or blog posts. And here you can also add content to your pages and posts, such as attachments or comments. And Edit, of course, that just lets you edit the content of your page or blog post. The Browse menu up here, this lets you access space-related items, such as from here you can access a list of all the pages in the space. And you can also use this menu to access Confluence-wide features such as the people directory. So just to recap, the key areas of Confluence that help you stay in touch with colleagues and the content that you all create are the dashboard, which is the landing point of the wiki, spaces and the pages and blog posts that populate them, the quick search and search facility, the user directory and profiles, and the menus and breadcrumbs that help you navigate the system and use the available functionality. So that's how you navigate around Confluence using key areas and key facilities.